It is you November like 9th. <laughs> <laughs> it is November 9th, 2017, and this is Atlanta United FC Weekly, a home before dark podcast. New studio! <laughs> oh! Uh, home sweet home. The studio has moved over yeah. to my house. I am Tim Herb, and as always, I'm joined by my lovely co host. It's nice to be so close to you guys right now. It's about right, Tim. <laughs> it's available. Giving me uh, titty twisters. I got Kevin to my right. Yes. Dan to my left. Good evening. And everybody else to the front of us. Thank you for tuning in on YouTube. If you guys are not subscribed, make sure you hit the subscribe button and then hit the little bell. The like, perspective is deceiving. Dan and I are not this are not substantially larger than Tim as the camera angle would lead you to believe. I, I dig it. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like they need to rotate out who's at the end of the table. Just yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, so so I, I can never look at this video. Yeah, so we got this new uh, – so every week we're going to do a vote uh, on, on the poll. Is that who gets to sit at the head of the, uh, at the, head of the table? You know, we're still trying to figure out the studio situation. Um, I don't know. We won't get into personal stuff, but, like, we uh, – yeah, moved everything over here. We have to figure out um, what, not bad, what fits so. best. No, you, no. I, 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 like, I wasn't sure if you wanted to disclose anything or whatever, but yeah. No, I don't okay. want to disclose anything. We're just moving can't, it from. My can't house. talk about it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. can't, can't talk about it. That big shit going on. I mean, look. I got, so we got we got some really important people and some really good things have happened, but I can't talk about it. Anymore. We're trying to make like a Disney, but for architecture. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we got we got the I got the movies. I'm making movies. I got uh, making fucking moves. <laughs> 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 anyway, yeah, so for right now, I think this is the setup, and it's the last, I guess, episode of season one of Atlanta United FC Weekly. It's kind of a bummer. Yeah. yeah. I think it's good it's been that real some, nice. some time has been put in between the game, because Tim was, let's just face it, I mean, he was... He was state. angry on He was Twitter. in a state. He was in a state. I mean, I had to copy that whole conversation, and I've saved it on my browser. We'll upload it eventually, but I had to... He was, he was in a state that I have not seen him in. Ever. Well, no, because uh, you weren't around uh, in the dorms whenever the Colts would lose to the Patriots or the like. Just, that's like the it's like Jordan taking out Reggie Miller in the Eastern Conference Finals or Kobe taking down the Pacers in in the two thousand one Finals in double overtime. It's that kind of shit. It's it's, yeah. but it makes me feel alive again as a sports fan. I haven't felt that way in a long time. That attached. That crushing, it, exactly. So, crushing so it, it's weird. Like I um, feel the same way as a Clemson fan. I haven't felt that in a while. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's weird. It does dull the the upset. It, does. it, it really, does. it really, it, it puts a like it desensitizes you a little bit to that loss, and it's 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 good, but at the same time, it makes you feel a little more detached from it. Yeah, um, that you're okay, not okay with losing, but you're not irate yeah. anymore. Yeah. You know, that's that's what happened. The Colts won the Super Bowl in two thousand six, and from then on, was I just I expected disappointment from right. them still. Right. So I mean, we got a championship. I this, guess this didn't hurt as much as the Super Bowl loss, but it definitely hurt. Which is it's kind of nice to hear that because coming from a Brit, I think there was just a lot of. Well, you guys love you guys love American football as much as you guys like to call it. As much as not you, the the royal you like to call it hand egg and all that <laughs> stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I mean, I'm but, all, but the all Brits, making fun of people, but I mean, I do like one. The Brits go apeshit over American football whenever it's over in, in yeah, Wembley. Yeah, the games are always sold out. Well, yeah. I think that it's always the worst games, too. Yeah. The other thing that's helped with putting some time in between the loss and now um, where we are in playoffs is we've seen Columbus do really well. Right. Yeah. And, we said and so that. it makes that loss a little bit better yeah, to deal with. And the, all that shit with Toronto as well. Like, I'm... Absolutely. I'm real put him for Javinko. <laughs> Javinko again, another free kick in that first game. Yeah. He just puts it away. God, come on, this guy's got cheat codes. Yeah, yeah, no, it's it's crazy. I mean, you, you see people asking why isn't he being courted by other teams in Italy? Why isn't he being part of? Why isn't he getting mm -hmm. called up by the Italian national team? Well, it's because he's playing in MLS. <laughs> yeah, and he. Uh, I mean, he's a star. He's the star. Yeah, yeah he's it's, star it's, it's crazy. He, and he, he was, turned down last year. He turned down offers from. Uh, Serie A teams, I believe, uh, to say which one. Yeah, I mean, he knows what he knows what he's capable of. I think he likes being as small as he is, big big fish in a small pond. Yeah, why wouldn't why you getting paid well? I think I, I feel like he's won. I, I want to say he won championships his second stint at Juve. He did well with um, oh shit, was it Torino? It, 
he he did well whenever he was away from you, even whenever he came in. But he's just the, the diminutive figure. Yeah, he's, he's so tiny, but he's he's so impactful. He's one of those guys that can spray the ball across the field. He can play make from anywhere, and then set pieces. It's crazy, yeah, especially for somebody that's small. He's the Ronaldo of the league. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's true. Yeah, it, he he wanted to leave. He did well enough in a big big better more competitive league and he decided to go to a less competitive league for more pay and is and the prospects he's the alpha the alpha dog yeah. Yeah. yeah well just under jersey of course because that guy's real stand up guy yeah no for <sighs> sure you know so what, what are your thoughts on new york booing him because he was up he was he was pretty visibly shaken i think by a new aggressive hip check it will. Yeah, <laughs> by, by the New York fans. Pretty much congrats to Russell. Yeah, no, yeah, kidding. We'll talk about that in a few. Um, but he was, he was absolutely like he was so disappointed in the New York Red Bulls fans for yeah. booing him. You know, I don't think he he didn't mention Atlanta. Whatever he's talking about that, he uh, said it's okay. You want to take out frustration on us not qualifying the World Cup? Sorry, in your face, Kevin. But the <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, but. But what he, what he, but what he said is that been here in weeks. <laughs> yeah. No, so he was disappointed because he has a studio in his house, and now he's just like, <laughs> no, no, no yeah. he's the man. Off. He's the GM in the podcast. Off. <laughs> big big fish. <laughs> <in it. laughs> Jesus. Yeah, so no, he was he, he was disappointed because he felt like the loyalty he gave uh, Red Bulls before he went off to be a Real was returned not in kind and. Uh, to me, it's it's weird though because how do you know that they're booing you for? I mean, they boo well, Michael Bradley too, right? Yeah, but Josie is such a douchebag that he thinks that it's all about him. All the it's time. all personal, and quite frankly, he's a drama queen, so he loves the drama. Obviously, he loves fake falling over um, and getting people into trouble and being some of the dude. He's got chicken legs and deleting tweets and stuff. Um, he's a scumbag. I really don't like the guy. <laughs> yeah, I don't think a lot of people like the guy. We are. I'm very happy. This end of the season, nothing going on, and we have people tuning into the live yeah, chat. I, I think <laughs> Richard Gordon said, "Not gonna lie, it took some time to get over that loss." Yeah, um, I think. Yeah, we got. We still got more to talk about with that. I mean, I was definitely disappointed, but it, it just because of the way it played out. Those players played their hearts out that entire game. And yeah, while, well, while there there are certainly complaints, and that's what most of my and Tim's conversation revolved around was that there were yes, there were moments or players or whatever that you wish that more would have been produced or more would have come out of it. And obviously that a better result had come out of it or better decisions were made. Ultimately what did play out was a lot of good and a lot of promise for a team that produced that over the course of the entire season. Mm -hmm. And I saw nothing short of that in that last game. Like nothing in that final game surprised me, if that makes sense. Like, right, right. Like my in, in experience, my, that yeah, sort of thing. Yeah, like my frustrations or, you know, our frustrations, I think, which we've talked about, whether it be Joseph or even with like Tata's choice in substitution sometimes have come up continuously throughout the course of the show. Yeah. All of that stuff was on stage against Columbus, but what I did see was 11 players put it all on the line for 120 minutes, and that's asking a lot for some of those guys that did stay on that field that entire course of time, and they made some big plays. Yes, there were some errors, but over the course of the night, like, I mean, there was a lot of really, really good things um, that I think overshadowed the negative. Yeah, no, I, I think it's, to me, maybe it's just my mindset, but it's natural for me. I mean, knowing the disappointment that I've felt with uh, all the other sports teams that I've followed for so right. long, it's it's really natural, I think, to, to point fingers. Like, I, right. you, there's always a scapegoat. And to me, uh, that night, I really was upset. I was I was pretty irate, actually, at Tata Martino. Yeah. Just, I mean, the, the substitutions first were – Kind of stupid, and then the the penalty kick situation was even dumber to me. But that side, I mean, having time to reflect, it's, especially it's, whenever you consider the big plays that took place that went that prevented that result from happening much sooner. Yeah, and, and a, like Parkhurst major stepping up in extra time, like 
that yeah. doesn't happen. We don't even get to PKs, you know. Some of the saves that Guzan has, mm -hmm. those don't happen. We don't even get to PKs. You know, Stefan doesn't get those saves. We don't get to PK. I mean, it's just it was a crazy game on both sides. Yeah, and, and dude earned himself a call up. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's you're talking about one inch on four shots, and it's TK. Absolutely. Yeah, and at the same time, if, if you, a line judge calls the correct, it doesn't call an offsides. Yeah, we lose in in regulation. And I, I'm yeah, I'm glad. Like after reflection, I'm glad we went out. The way it was rather than right because especially it's, it's, it's a coin toss i'm yeah. never gonna get upset i mean of course i was upset i wanted to win but at the same time like you said it is a coin toss ultimately and i think tim has valid points to who maybe should have taken those pks but again it boils down to ifs and maybes and you could just as easily say maybe Stephanie yeah. comes out with but, some big saves on those but, and it's still a coin toss either way you look at it you know but um here in the context and how those guys were chosen to take well, the penalty. Well, Chata talking about, like, they didn't even think about that but, before. Uh, right. <laughs> that makes, to me, that makes them even a bigger scapegoat, right? I mean, I agree. Yeah, but at the same time. So uh, a couple things in the chat. We have Mark Holloway, who, a uh, great guy, joined us for the, the Terminus Legion uh, poker tournament. He's, uh, he's chiming in. First time I've seen him in the chat. Uh, thanks for tuning in, Mark. Um, <coughs> he said uh, Joseph should have come on or should have come off after 90, he was gassed and had nothing else to offer. I think a lot of those players that thrown at Vialba was dead. Yeah, he said, I mean, if you're going to take yeah. him off at 116, may as well leave him on for that point for a PK. Agreed. So Kevin's Kevin's off uh, getting getting another LaCroix. You guys, it, this is it's weird. It's a dry podcast. It's, it's too much emotions. If we start drinking, it might get out of hand. <laughs> yeah, it's. Uh, <laughs> it, it also has to do with the fact that I don't keep uh, any booze in the house. I'm sure that's part of it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> the straight edge guy's gonna start having a liquor cabinet. Those bookshelves will be filled with. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Hiding a bottle in the top of the. Uh, also, uh, shout out Josh Busby, 47. Said cabs at Rockets with a Home Before Dark soundtrack. Great Thursday. Appreciate mm -hmm. it. Um, oh, not a live dry chat. I, I, not a dry live chat. That's yeah. what I like to hear. Those yeah. are those are true fans nice. of the show. They, they understand come what it's about. Good job. And as always, Brittany S. Thanks for uh, yeah. for tuning in. She said uh, should have won before PKs. And also yeah. another point, Kevin yeah. Kevin Brown, our uh, our um, road correspondent, says that the championship, the road to the championship, always goes through Atlanta. I guess that's true. It is. <laughs> no. So to get back to your point, Kevin, about the not feeling so bad, feeling a little vindicated after a few weeks watching what Columbus has done or what I, really they're one of the few teams in the playoffs that has put their foot to the gas outside of, well, you can't even say they didn't against Atlanta. They just came up against, I mean, we're what the fourth best, de best defense. We showed it that night. We were playing the hottest team in the league. Yeah. We shut them out. And, and then you see them go first off, go to a charged crowd, I guess, in Columbus, not a sellout. We can talk a little bit more about that later. But they go and they beat a much favored NYCFC team, 3-1. Oh, yeah. The Bulls of the Wall. Yeah, yep. absolutely. Yep. And it, the first thing that came to my head was, oh, man, I mean, New York City got a, an away goal. I feel like that's <laughs> – it, it, from watching Champions League so much, it's like – Yeah, yeah. That, yeah. That's – that's prime for them like going, to, to go it's at going home. back to Inter. Yeah, you know, like, exactly. It's it's a, <laughs> you go back and you win two nothing in a really boring game, and you end up winning the uh, winning yeah. the the tie. So, no, they they put their foot down. I mean, they're they are a good team. And you called that before that game was that I think Atlanta statistically, and even in that again, I think that result was very true to if you're going to lose that game. I would prefer to lose that way. The stat sheet was pretty even, if not more, on yeah. Atlanta's side. It wasn't one of those where Atlanta dominated possession for 70 minutes and right, you know, we're kicking it around and 30 shots on the goal, and then all of a sudden we lost three nothing. You know, it's so. But you said it. Columbus was at a point, and still is in a lot of ways, was sort of on this upward trend on the tail end of their season. And yeah. even though Atlanta perfect, like, and even though Atlanta and that's what playoffs are all about is who's peaking at that right. time. You, the opening right. round was was a perfect example of that. I mean people could talk as much as they want about the percentage or the, the, the win percentage of home teams in the first round of the playoffs, but it didn't matter because you right. had New York Red Bulls coming in, I mean, as hot as I mean they don't lose games. 
right? They they <laughs> hardly lose games. They right? They right. they draw more than more than anything, and they came in destroyed Chicago in a really just sad crowd. And yeah, oh, yeah eleven thousand. Eleven thousand in yeah. Chicago. They can't. Yeah, it's crazy. I think that team used to pull like Soldier Field. Well, that's the thing that concerns me. I mean, we we this conversation is going to come up for years and years to come is what is Atlanta United going to sustain as a supporter base and fan base. And mm-hmm. when you look at Chicago, which was an expansion team, the last expansion team to make it to the playoffs in their first year. Right, it was had, 1998, I want to say. Uh, it was like two years after the league know, opened or a couple years after the league opened. That's open. the next challenge for Atlanta. It's, it's, it's sustained that. What exactly. can we do next year? Exactly. Are we gonna, uh, how are we going to build on this? How are we going to... Yeah. So, so how, I mean... How, so, and I think... You know, the first thing on that is to have a killer front office, which we did. Well, it's not just that. I mean, obviously the play will speak for itself, but I think the other big thing that Atlanta managed to do and the marketing, I mean, I think I think the marketing is just as responsible for the well-being of this team and this fan base as it is the actual right. production on the field. And so yeah. I, I just hope to see a lot of that continue. Right, that's it's evident because we were selling out games before we even played a minute. It, we, right, people didn't know the these month players. Thing can really. take you short time. It can only take you so far for like Absolutely. a couple, like a month or Absolutely. so. But if we just lost yeah. for like two months, mm-hmm. then there's yeah. No so month yeah, month yeah and, help us. but all you can do is prep yourself. All you can do is prep. So if you can do the best you can in preparation, which I think Atlanta has hit on all. All Absolutely. cylinders on. Absolutely. Uh, it, it gives me huge hope. If there's any team that can sustain it, any newcomer, it's... It, uh, it's yeah, and it's interesting. Mark Holloway, another really poignant thing. Um, he's saying places like Chicago, Dallas, D.C., that they struggle with poorly placed stadiums, it would be like the equivalent of us playing in Lithonia, which if you guys aren't... Did I hear that the dome got imploded, by the way? Oh shit! When was oh, that? I think it happened at the end of October. No, no, it, no, no, it's, no, it's, it's in November. November. Yeah, I think it's actually November thirty. Yeah, I was in November. So like, I thought it was October seven in the morning. I want to. I kind of want to go. Oh, I definitely want to do that. So, so I, uh, Mark, Mark brings up. Yeah, that would be fun. Yeah. Yeah. So Mark brings up a good point though, because we talked about this ad nauseum. I'm sure you guys are probably tired of hearing about it. If not, great. But the idea behind a soccer specific stadium. Ugh. Right. I mean, if you want to talk about Chicago, Dallas, well, DC is in RFK right now. They're moving to Audi Field, Audi Stadium, something like that. We'll see what their attendance is like next year. But with the soccer specific stadiums, even if, what does it hurt for? I mean, I don't know the, the circumstance, but I imagine Chicago Fire weren't necessarily being pushed out of Soldier Field by anybody other than MLS, right? Uh, yeah, it's same with Dallas, probably playing in Reliance Stadium. Or no, that's Houston, sorry. Uh, they probably can't play at Jerry World, and I uh, think about it. But at the same time, there's plenty of uh, there's plenty of real estate in Dallas. But, yeah, that sucks. I mean, Kevin Brown says Chicago Stadium, and he would he would know uh, really well. He went, to all, the, <laughs> he went to all the away games this year, um, I think with the exception of one or two. But he says Chicago Stadium is really far away, or so far from the city. It's kind of sad. I mean, yeah, that's it's not like – so people in, in Atlanta exaggerate. To me, I think they exaggerate about the Brave Stadium being in Cobb when it's – Oh, it's not that far away. Dude, it's it's it's, it's literally normal. one – it's – it's, 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 Yeah, I know. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. yeah no, I feel the <laughs> – I, I feel the – don't tell people where, where I live. Uh, so, no, but at the same time, it's, it's crazy. People were complaining about the Cobb Braves. They are literally within a quarter mile – of city limits, right? I mean, it's not like, right. yeah, it's it's an unincorporated Cobb County. I think the biggest difference there is that there is no public transit that goes to the city. I think that's what, I mean, Kevin's talking about is that there's not a train adjacent to the Chicago stadium at all, and that's what yeah, Mercedes-Benz provides at least. Is the other thing is central you know, that you can access easily. People will gladly use public transportation in Chicago and rely on it, whereas yeah. that's not as much the case right now, this, we'll have cars, because so. nothing happens downtown in atlanta it's a business center and after and it's a it's a university center and after 5 p.m the fucking city shuts down no, well no my point is like we gladly drive our cars to wherever but oh yeah yeah, yeah, yeah chicago yeah. don't necessarily no not at all yeah no and yeah. if there's no transportation to the game then you know it's going to be going to be the hardcore so, ones that actually make it 
Uh, shout out to Jimmy Vance from uh, 929 The Game. Beautiful game on Twitter. Uh, I, I wish I could say, can we say this was intentional? Just a thematic. I think, I think this works really well. Yeah. You picked up on it, and it definitely was not. But in true Atlanta United fan yeah. fashion, we do not sit down. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, you don't sit down at work. I don't. Yeah, I'm it's working not. on it. No, not me. I got really bad posture. Yeah, I, 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 I just sling back in my Ikea chair. Yeah, that's and, why uh, I have to do the standing desk. I have terrible posture if I'm not standing up. To see. No, so, I, I mean, to that point, though, I mean, what's – I guess it's not so bad when you have to replace a hundred fifty million dollar stadium because it's not a uh, eight hundred million billion dollar stadium. But what's the point of even building it if you know that people in a city like Chicago, which is congested and it's not a sprawling metropolitan area where people drive, like you said, like Atlanta is? I mean, what? I, I just I still think that it's uh, prohibiting growth in the future. Well, also it comes, part of it is that, but part of it comes down to Chicago Fire in not promoting their brand and being successful within that marketplace. Because, I mean, Atlanta United have done a really good job with yeah, I, I, brand I, and marketing. So that's what I'm saying. I think it's, it goes hand in hand. It's, yeah. it's, you've got to have some sort of identity outside of it. Exactly. Because that's ultimately what's going to move MLS forward. Let's be honest. I mean, there are people here that are fans mm -hmm. of soccer, fans of EPO, and stuff like that. But being in America, being in a capitalist country, <laughs> like yeah, it's the dollar, mar man. It's that's marketing right. and the shiny and flashy yeah. and plastic that's gonna <laughs> get people on board. <laughs> I mean, ultimately, like let's, yeah. be, let's be honest. I mean, as much flag as Atlanta fans get for being plastic or whatever, right. like, a certain amount of that is in every fan base because that's what drives well, the that, That's why right, Atlanta are up forward. here and Orlando are down here. Exactly. Maybe with a little bit more plastic, yeah. they can actually fill but, some of those But seats. maybe maybe they can sleep better at night. I don't know. Well, they had a lot. They had an extra day to sleep. Basically, we, we got the extra hour for being like savings time. They had the whole extra day because they didn't make it to the playoffs. So that's yeah, right, that's right. <laughs> you know, as much shit as we talk about Orlando. <laughs> They at least have, and it's a point that you brought up and kind of shaming one of their fans for talking about Arthur Blank being a billionaire. And I mean, they, at least their owner does, they market. And oh, they, yeah. they, fill, yeah. they fill up, for the most part, a decent-sized stadium, especially, I mean, think about Chicago having 11,000. Is yeah. it 11,000, you said? Yeah. Right. In the stadium for that, for that playoff yeah. game. Yeah. Yeah. Orlando at least fills out 20, 20 grand. Right. And, and oh, they're a terrible absolutely. team. Absolutely. Yeah. I will say, I mean, so we've talked extensively about Orlando and the banter has gone back and forth, but I still, I will hack off. I don't know who it was and maybe they're listening to this podcast out of spite, but one of the best jabs I've seen by an Orlando supporter was after our loss to Columbus and it said, we may not have made it to the playoffs, but we still have as many goals in playoffs as Atlanta United. <laughs> yeah. Actually, what? So – not to, not to, not to, <laughs> not to stick. Well, that's with, not true because we scored some penalties. Yeah, that's true. true. <laughs> some, so that's, that's some, wrong. Some means more than one. Oh, uh, was it just the other? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And he, well, and he almost had it stopped. They don't, yeah, but we scored a goal and they haven't scored a goal. I still, I still think it's the best. I would <laughs> give it that. It was, it was great. Not yeah, no, no. quality. Did you see it. they they did like a? I saw this blow up. I we always end up getting embroiled in this stuff because Good of uh, because of surveillance. Of I, how many chain. times have I had to turn <laughs> off Twitter notifications on my phone at this point? I can't count it. I and mean, every time I'm like, okay, I can turn them back on again. Nope, another conversation yeah. comes up where it's just. <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe it won't be as bad with 280 characters, but it, we we got brought into a discussion. Uh, well, at least I did. It might have been a personal account, but. They, um, I guess Orlando fans, well, Orlando City put together a charity game with, Por I think, Puerto Rico's <laughs> quote unquote national team, I oh guess. Oh my or, gosh, I and, saw that. And they, beat, right. it, and they beat them six to one. Yeah. Right. And Orlando, there were some Orlando fans just virtue signaling like crazy, like, oh. we shouldn't have beat them. This was for them. We were playing with them, not against them. And, no, and everybody's like, to like it was so great to watch their fan base get just absolutely torn in two because <laughs> everybody's just like, how deluded is this person? Yeah, it's <laughs> like, so crazy. I mean, what's yeah? What should what would be a nice thing to do for Puerto Rico? How about we patronize them and just play them for one one tour? That's bullshit. That's yeah. that's, an, that, that's insulting. Yeah, yeah, I agree. 
Um, so, so we have we have a couple things. Jay Riddle, our Miles of the South, chiming in, giving us some shit. He's saying that uh, he's trying to make this into the, a political thing, saying we don't kneel on this podcast. No, no, no. I love this country. No. Um, he also said, "Breaking <laughs> uh, is this true? Breaking news: uh, Austin unanimously approves resolution to allow investigation of land possibilities for MLS stadium." I don't know. Um, he said 35 people showed up in Austin, MLS, to ATX. That's a lot of letters. Uh, that's because it's their second team? Is that right? No. MLS 2. Or no. Oh, I get it. MLS. I get it. No, I was just, the, yeah, they're, 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 their old team is USL. Was yeah, that's stupid. <laughs> he said, uh, but but he said that they're, they are claiming 150 uh, plus showed up. So, I don't know. Well, I mean, Austin obviously wants soccer there, so they're going to want to no, make do, accommodations to. Dude, why? Yeah. Uh, who in Austin wants soccer there? Well, because there's 35 people who showed up. There, so. Yeah, it's it's great. City councils. I like, think Dallas more. I, I think Dallas probably wants a team in Austin more than people in Austin want. And a team surely it's just to have something to kind of drive people into some sort of rival <laughs> scenario. Yeah. Maybe maybe yeah. that'll try to spur on some interest. You know, it's yeah. It's it's crazy. It sucks that a like a first class MLS team like Dallas gets no support like that. But at the yeah. same time, and talking about Austin wanting a team, I mean they lost a USL team, right? I mean it's it's not. A, I don't think anyone cares. About it's that a, it's a town of weirdos. It's it's a town of <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. You know that's that's their whole thing, right? Them in Portland is like keep Austin weird, uh, keep Portland weird. No, but they're like it's a really artsy town. But I guess we do see a good bit of hipsters at Atlanta United games, so it, maybe it's. Yeah, and I, I don't I think, know, but I, I and I mean that, that I don't mean that derogatorily. I, I just mean that like yeah, strictly yeah, yeah. demographically. No, I feel like that. Yeah, um, I think it's again, it's reflective of what most of the fan base for the league is typically, and it's not old white dudes typically that are really big into MLS. Uh, you haven't been to my section, really? <laughs> They're actually a good bit of like. 40 to 50, actually probably 40 to 60 year old white males that are in my section, my old section, but privilege. Most yeah, I guess so. No, but aren't they like the skinny kind? They're kind of like 50 year old hipsters. So if you go to Brew House Cafe, you can see a couple of them. Yeah, no, I've never been to Brew House. I remember I went to watch the England Italy game and they're like, fish and chips, fish and chips. Like, that is the worst Because <laughs> <laughs> I would think that. Anyway, yeah, um, to Jimmy Vance's point, he said, Arthur Blank treats Atlanta United first class. It shows with top class manager, good young players, facilities, marketing, et cetera. Robert Kraft in their front office just hired Brad Friedel, guys. That's right. It's crazy. Oh, well, we, man, so Friedel. for, for any, cross or any other, if you guys are fans of uh, basketball, I, I'm, I'm a big basketball nut. So one of my favorite players of all time, Mark Jackson, who's a point, point guard for the Pacers, he ended up getting a coaching job with the the Warriors and he took him to the Eastern or Western Conference Finals he had never coached in his life before that so as much as I want to dog what New England is doing and typically it's the guys from the back right I mean it's same with catchers in, in baseball whenever they get brought up as managers and they're more they see the oh, field yeah, they've they be, been in that they have more experience <laughs> <laughs> He's, okay Jay Riddle is requesting that you do Brad Friedel's accent I don't even know what Brad Friedel sounds like he sounds like a an American who's been over in England for too long. We actually had we had a librarian at Furman. Currently, my voice right now. You, so our middle school. Do you remember the librarian at Furman? He's a really big dude with uh, glasses. No. And he talked with this fake Romanian accent. He's an American guy. He went over to live there for like nine years and came back and had this like half cocked Romanian accent. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy how that shit happens. You guys ever think you might have a brain tumor when it was just parts of things that it was completely like, did. I don't remember that individual in my life whatsoever. <laughs> yeah, but then again, we didn't know each other in middle school either. So, and we went to middle school. Oh wait, either. middle school. I didn't go to the library much then. I thought you meant high school. Oh, okay, right. that explains. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that the Brett, snack thing. Oh God, that's really that's kind of terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember the other lady, really skinny lady, Miss? Uh... No, I still probably have it to you. Yeah. <laughs> no. Anyway. No, Brad Friedel being, being don't remember me. Though. What do you what do you think about that? I mean, it's uh, it's like whenever we talk about EPL. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Brad Friedel replacing Jay Heaps. Jay Heaps, I think, was brought in when I did. I want to say he didn't have any managerial experience, did he? 
I have no idea. I well, any, anyway, I mean, I love Brad Friedel to death. I think he played too long. I'd say give him a chance. Yeah, especially with, I mean, if, if they're in the East and he's bad, better for us, right? Okay. <laughs> I'm happy to see them come back to Atlanta for another 7 nil drubbing if he's no better than Jay Heaps is. Yeah. yeah. Um, Trust the landing night to come in the year. Yeah. So how cool, yeah. Is the strongest it's been in. Yeah, no, no kidding, right? And how cool is it for a team to come in as an expansion team, be so successful, but also, above all else, be part of so many memorable, just objective MLS memories or MLS moments this year. Right. I mean, we, we were probably part of the most exciting playoff game so far. Yeah. Because either it's been nil-nil or one-nil kick fest, like uh, Houston and uh, SKC. Uh, Kevin's humping my uh, <laughs> <laughs> my <laughs> island. Yeah, um, did someone shit their pants? <laughs> Where's it, Pirlo? No, yeah, Pirlo probably. Uh, he's probably. Oh, Tim, <laughs> is that you? No, it's not me. No, Dan passing farts. <laughs> <laughs> Something God. smells like cat farts. You no, know, I have. So this is one of oh. the things. Now we have traded studios and also. Oh. Also, with that, we have a 65-pound oh. lab mix instead of a instead of a, little, instead of a little cat uh, taking the place of the fourth person. God, he eats cheese bones. His his stomach's upset, dude. Oh. He's lay off. Mine too. Yeah. Now. Yeah. This is is, is it contagious? Is gas contagious? I need a toxoplasmosis. From I this. might. Have to. <laughs> I may have to leave. <laughs> you gambling gotta, habit as a result. <laughs> you gonna drive yourself off a bridge? <laughs> Just uh, start doing Ooh, really risky. This behavior. is really bad, Tim. I don't know if I can do this. Where is he? He's in the living room. Right? Yeah, other you know. side of the house. It's just completely derailed. Oh. Now everybody is. Oh, dead. this is so bad. <laughs> I can't even smell it. You're just used to. Yeah. <laughs> Being, oh. Just I've fallen in love with my captor. Oh. I have Stockholm syndrome with my dog. <laughs> oh. yeah. Okay, God. now that this is completely gone off the rails, do we have any oh. reviews since the last time we did? The I show? don't know. I'll check while we're talking. Um, so yeah, yeah so cool, cool moments that we've been involved in. I mean, we pretty we free. break the attendance record three times. Since yeah, we, we did. No, we, no, we didn't. We didn't break. Well, we did. We broke it? the playoff attendance record, but not the single game attendance record. So technically, yes, but it was a different record that we broke. But, um, unfortunately, yeah, somebody's uh, cruel landlord uh, painted the windows shut, so I can't even open the windows to get rid of the. Uh, the I'm gonna go get those matches, dude. <laughs> this is rough. Yeah. So <laughs> no, we yeah we broke the attendance record twice in the regular season, once in the playoffs. We we broke the average attendance record for both an expansion team and in general. It's it was cool. Um, the six one drubbing of Minnesota in the snow. The what what do they call that? The snowpocalypse. It's like this. <laughs> they had another um they had another name for it not the snowball something like that but i know they we embarrassed the shit out of them yeah we did and then, then in new and england then we turned around and beat the crap out of chicago yeah we have one more i'll let you pick it up i'm gonna get those matches god oh there's a really really uh as always if you guys leave us a re review on itunes we will read it it's a legal obligation of the show whatever you write we will read on the show that's right. Um, we have number 66 in here uh, from Bo David. One word. I like it. Um, five stars. It just says, great show. <laughs> just, leave, just leaving it succinct. I like it. So Kevin has the matches out. Well, after I create these fake email accounts, I'm kind of tired. So it's just. Yeah. Um, it, but it's an honor. So he's farting because he's upset that his namesake finally retired from, from soccer. Um, I mean, it was time. He was not. Andrea oh, Pirlo sorry. hasn't been good in, in a while. But he, I mean, he's been the greatest. One of the greatest soccer players ever yeah. played the game. Yeah, hence me naming my dog after him. I hate him. that Italian national team, and I still, I still <laughs> bet it anyway. It's like Daniela De Rossi couldn't break Brian McBride's nose enough to not get me to name him that. So, um, I don't know. We're, I, I feel like we're completely no, derailed. I, it was... It was I didn't even get it until Dan was like, "Why did you shit your pants?" Like, and so British and polite. Like, I wonder how long he was stewing in it before he like, <laughs> asked the question of what's going on. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, it's just like slingshotted around you and hit me in the face. Did one of you put a number two in your knickers? 
governor. So, did you, anyway. did you drop a trolley wop in your knickers? All right, so we're not going <laughs> to. <laughs> it's the first time I've ever heard that. No, I'm, I'm, I am positive it's not. <laughs> um, so, I don't want to do. We're, we're going to set up a separate show. Should, can we tell everybody your Skype name? Or should we just tell them they're doing this? Um, yeah, I guess I can give them. I can always just reject calls. I don't ever put it up and I don't ever turn it on unless it's Tim underscore Herb so, on Skype. So we'll, we'll, we'll coordinate it on Twitter. Give us a DM or you something. You guys can do you can DDoS attack me, whatever. You guys can just completely they're ruin gonna, my, atta- my account. Gonna, I'll just start another one. They're going to swat you. Yeah. That's what's going to happen. We're going to be recording. Have you heard about this? No. Swatting people? So, like Twitch streamers and stuff like that that don't have good enough security encryption on their network and stuff like that, people will find out their, what is it, their IP address or whatever and backdoor to what their actual physical address is, then call the cops and say that there's a terrorist <laughs> oh, yes, I oh, and like They yeah. have to report, they have to actually address it. So FBI will storm the house while they're like on Twitch. There are all these accounts of like, Kids getting their fucking back and forth kicked <laughs> in. <laughs> FBI agents storming the house. It's a legit thing. <laughs> and now that's going to happen. <laughs> oh, so. That's fine. If they, if they want to... If they want to face the wrath of the dog. So, um, speaking of, he's going to start barking because his mom's just walking in while we're in the middle of recording. This is another thing <laughs> I guess we have to... Uh, we have to account this for. This thing is just gone. <laughs> yeah. This thing is off the rails at this point. Uh, it's, it's gone completely off the rails. So, uh, but so, no, wait, so, so we're not going to recap the season show yet. We, we want to involve all the listeners. We talked about that a couple weeks ago where we want to have a full call-in episode where we just kind of let it run, do five or ten minute segments with everybody that's been a part of the show over the course of the season, talk about our favorite moments throughout the season and all that. But that said... Wrapping up the season, what, what were you guys' thoughts about the last game, playoffs, looking towards the future, I guess? Like I said, we'll do a much bigger show uh, in the coming weeks so as we start to figure out what we're going to do in the offseason. We're going to keep coming with new content. The latest oh. suggestion was to start doing pregame analysis and postgame analysis for the Home Before Dark pro team on FIFA, which Tim has got set up. Oh. So. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty great. I think, I think we have uh, – we're doing pretty well, actually. No, we we got we're about to be promoted to the second division. Nice. Yeah. Well, whatever the ninth division out of ten. But <laughs> we uh, it's it's really hard. It's it's awesome though. If you guys want to be a part of it, just add me on on Xbox One. Just Gart Face G A T G A R T F A C E. Definitely getting swatted. Yeah, definitely getting swatted. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, Jay, Jay's right. We are terrible. But Denodo is going to swat the shit out of <laughs> we're only We're only terrible whenever we have eight. We had eight people in the game the other night. There were only three computer players playing with us the other night. It was crazy. Wow. It's awesome. It's really hard. It's like having it's it's like having eight th- uh, eight <laughs> thumbs at that point. Is I feel like we right? doesn't everyone we just do? run forward to try and score a goal. So part of our post postseason content may be can we get three we can get three players on one screen here, right? No. Can now with now with the pro club. Maybe, maybe. We need to find out. And yeah, then, no. I, I, I say I, we can do our like we can do a regular show and then Twitch stream right. all three of us playing to fill those other couple of computer spots and what just you, get everybody on there. What are, what are you guys doing after this? I gotta bounce after this. Oh god, because I have it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, this is already set up. <laughs> um, do you yeah. want to go? Do you want to do like any like postseason awards or anything? Yeah, sure. We can uh, we can do that. Fong Yang. Oh, so well, it's how- gonna be like the Dundies. We're just gonna yeah, right, make yeah. our own Ten trophies. Days. Like we're gonna have three trophies basically. Yeah. Well, I was talking for like Atlanta United, but oh, I thought you were talking about us. Best co-host award goes to Damn. Zelda. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, she got she got she got Take a lot of votes. Best co-host, Malpio. <laughs> Yeah, I give him a run for his money on Jesus. that. Um, oh, okay, I like that. End of the end of the season of awards. Yeah, you want to run through those now? So, well, before we do that, we did have a legitimate award given out that as of yesterday, uh, Rookie of the Year. That's Rookie right. Russell. I think it was a foregone conclusion after about halfway through the season. It Absolutely. was great because I don't think people were expecting him so early to make such a big contribution. The Chicago game really gave him that push, and he we. 
aside from a few games where he set the bench, he really never looked backwards. No. Yeah, he did a great job. Like it was. What was the game um, after Almiron came out? Um, he when he had his hamstring. He that was LA, right? Was and I and then Gressel started started the next game and it was like he's coming out. Yeah, uh, no. So Almiron injured himself against Montreal. Okay. And then yeah, Gressel came in, played well, and then also came in for him the next game against LA. Yeah. Yeah. He he scored the same goal that he missed against Toronto with that you know running to the outside of the goal with the right, outside of his right foot, trying to boot it to the. Uh, he showed a lot of maturity. I thought that he matured really quickly in this league too, but that's also, to me, just to draw more comparisons to other sports, whenever you see seniors come out of college, sometimes they're better than their more quote unquote more talented, more, uh, uh, or their counterparts that have more potential. See that work all the time. I mean, he was, (laughs) because normally players come out of the super draft and they're not, the projects. Right. You, you, not, s- you saw that with our right. first overall our draft pick, right? Miles mm-hmm. Robinson. He's sitting he's been sitting the bench and a lot of times he wasn't even in the eighteen. He was but he is a protege at this point, right? To, to mm-hmm. Michael Parkhurst. So or his successor, hopefully. So yeah, I mean congrats to Julian Gressel. It's well deserved. Absolutely. And there were some other great rookies that we saw, albeit not as as frequently between Alfonso Davies and then um, Jack Harrison. And uh, Din Laden. Yeah, Abu Din Laden. Jack Harrison wasn't a rookie, was he? It was his second year. Oh, he was? It's either second or third year. Yeah, he's been playing for... Yeah, but Abu Din Laden, he's, he's good. So is Alfonso Davies. And Alfonso Davies is like 16 years old. Is that right? Uh, yeah. From uh, Vancouver? Like yeah. Yeah, he, yeah, he, he really, really well. And then he played in the Gold Cup and was just dropping goals for Canada. He's like... Yeah, I remember when I was doing the, the... Trying to read a little bit about Vancouver before we started... Davis's name kept on popping up. I was like, oh, he's probably, you know, just assumed he was a veteran player. But uh, No. <laughs> and then Waston came in and just bossed our entire team around. Yeah. So speaking of um, other awards, were you guys surprised that Leandro Gonzalez-Perez didn't finish at least second in the defender voting? Yeah. Do, do you have the, the – what, what was the order that guys came in? So it was – Unprepared. Yeah, no, shit. You'll have to look it up. I know that Opara finished in front of him. Uh, I want to say Matt yeah, Beasler. Opara, what? Yeah, yeah. Matt Beasler, I think, was in front of him as well, if I'm not mistaken. And then Waston. I think that he was fourth behind those three guys. Hmm. Ike Opara, did, did he end up getting a call-up with the, with the men's national team for, for the Portugal game? Dude, Brandon Vasquez dicked. Opara when he scored the goal to equalize. <laughs> you know what else? I Brandon think, Vasquez I think, also he, did? I think he scored do an you, overhead do kick. To, do you need to be reminded of what Brandon Vasquez also did this season? <laughs> uh, couldn't have stamina. Yeah. Not going to sing And then you guys wanted to put him <laughs> in, and he comes in instantly. <laughs> Good chance, bro. <laughs> Moment of the season <laughs> was whenever Kevin Broadley came out. <laughs> Oh my god. So other awards for the team. Are we gonna make up our own? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Let's do it. Okay. I don't this is completely off the cuff. I don't know. Um so well that's that's how we roll. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So uh best goalie. <laughs> uh Alec Khan. Yeah, not a dog time. <laughs> <understand. laughs> I feel like you guys are completely know, disrespecting like- Kyle Ray. This year, I mean, he got a red card. True, he did. I mean, I don't see anybody else getting a red card. Sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry. I, I want to correct myself. It was Opara, Justin Morrow from Toronto, and then Kendall Waston, and then Leandro Gonzalez Perez. Uh, Matt Beasley was after Gonzalez Perez. Right. I guess Opara got it because he scored an over and Kendall Waston was probably Vancouver's top goal scorer. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I feel like Kendall Waston was the best. Best defender he, in the he was, league. He's, he was he's, I, if he doesn't get picked up by somebody in Europe, I understand he's like nearing, not nearing 30, but he's in his mid 20s. Yeah. But So, best defender, LGP, all around? Well, I would it, almost put Walks in there. I want to put Walks in there. So, I want, to bring up, I want to bring up a really interesting discussion. Uh, I don't know if you looked was into it. Was it really that interesting? No, no, no. Um, it's just a really stupid discussion. Um, 
we'll bring that up later. You know, so to that point, who did we see a more negative impact from in their absence during either injury or accumulation? LGP or Garza? LGP. Yeah. Because I think Garza, there were – This team wasn't really the same at all. No, it wasn't, but it wasn't – We, we overly struggled detrimental to score goals. as I felt like LGP did. Yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. I'm not, it was I'm definitely not, different. But. Yeah, I'm not taking anything away from that. I think LGP Ooh, was our best defender. We do have a great suggestion by Jimmy. Best goal celebration, and hands down, it's Brussels. After the FIFA trailer came out, he he's shown in the like FIFA yeah. doing the celebration, and he does that celebration the very next game and gets yeah. everybody on board with it. That will take it. Hands I down think I think it's that, and I think Assad. His Despacito uh, karaoke <laughs> against LA. I thought that was pretty great. That was good. Um, what about for you, Dan? Uh, I mean, I'm going LGP because he's my boy. Yeah. No, I think uh, he is, right? I, I think he's so our best what defender. I, what I, I loved about LGP is he saved a whole bunch of goals with pretty effective slide tackling, like on the edge of the box. He's the, yeah, he's the and, man. And Plus he, his ball playing skills. Ooh, I got another take it out. He only garnered one red card the entire year, too, against Montreal, which, which was rescinded. rescinded. Yeah. yeah. So he was very accurate with I, those slide tackles. I think he was received a fair amount of yellow cards, I think, behind Tom Omer. Most improved. Okay, so we don't really have a frame of reference from last year. So you mean from the beginning of the from year? From the beginning of the year to the end. I'm going to say the defense as a whole. I think it's a cop-out. Okay, well, I'll... Individual I'll, awards. We're not <laughs> players came in and out. Why not? Why not? Uh, Atlanta United. Atlanta United. <laughs> Very great. They started out nil nil. <laughs> How about this? The city of Atlanta. I mean, oh, okay. we, we all think the world, Atlanta, I think yeah. I think the MLS as a whole benefited. It's yeah. much better. You're now. welcome. Postseason, let's say like that. United being part of the league, but okay, fine. Uh, most improved, I would say. I would say Gressel. Yeah. Because he came out hot, but he did have a bit of a lull during those months whenever Martinez was out. And a lot of us were having that debate week in, week yeah, out. Yeah, I was calling him to sit down. Yeah. Right, what is he going to do? He had a lot of games where he wasn't really producing much. And then by the end of the season, I think he was definitely a consistent player that we just relied on, whether he was on the <laughs> wing. Whether yeah. he was on the wing or in that ten spot, whenever Almiron was out, I think I think Russell gets my vote. He, for that. He's the he's the one player that we saw going up and hitting a wall and managing to break through that wall. Absolutely, through the through the scene. That that's actually pretty impressive. You know, the one thing I will say about his most improved is I feel like the peak that we saw him at this season wasn't that towards the end of the season wasn't that far off from the peak that we saw from him in his good performances early no, on in the season. Not, yeah, I think in, I in think terms that, of consistency, yes, I'll I give you that for sure. Exactly. I think that his performance wasn't necessarily better than it was at its best, but it was much more consistent and on a regular yeah, basis I get that. game to game, whereas before it was like you would just get glimpses of it. You know, and then you would go for right. four or five game stretches where he just wasn't even existing. Is, like, is he your pick too? So let's do it where we can't pick the same player. So okay, yeah. Russell's gone. You want to go? Well, for me, oh well, we all picked LGP, but okay. Well, I I've just implemented the rule. <laughs> okay, <right>? okay, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna go to the tape. <laughs> yeah. No, so most improved. I think it goes along with my criticism and then my just heaps of praise as we continue throughout the season. But you Yom Assad. Or even for Eloni, I, I we saw him. I was really frustrated with him very early on for all the flops and dives he was taking, like yeah. excessively. I, yeah, you're absolutely right. And he became, in in a lot of ways, he and maybe one or two other guys really became the engine for the team. Yeah. I well, mean, he's he's the hot. Yeah, I mean, him, Carmona, and and uh, Vialba, I think would I would say would be our the the engine. Yeah, they're yeah yeah. What about you, Dan? So, well, with those two gone, I, it, maybe it's just my perspective, but I'm going to say the Alba. I didn't notice him as much, and I felt a lot of criticism towards him at the start of the year. I mean, even though he scored those two goals against Toronto, but there was still something from him that I didn't see. 
And when, I think it was towards the middle to the end of the season, I saw him putting together passes and acting like, or almost like a false nine, like going forward, but also hooking up plays in like laterally in the final third of the, of the field to give, you know, to yeah. really become a threat for, for teams to be aware of. So, no, I, I could see that for sure. Uh, and I was pretty hard on him. I, yeah, you I, were. Yeah, yeah, I think absolutely. I was. I think I was the only softy on him. And now, I know. <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I'd be, I'd be gutted to see him go. You know, it's it's interesting Especially because now. yeah, I, I definitely would. I would much rather him stay than it's. Than say what you say what you will, but but Joseph, yeah. I think that was. I think we almost need to reevaluate that conversation again now that the season's over because we've had it multiple times. Of, yeah, three DPs can't keep all three. Which one? Which one do you? Especially, if you can only yeah. keep one of the three. You know, I feel like that conversation has changed so, as the season's gone on. Yeah, you know, I'd say I'm on team. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, we have a couple interesting ones. Brittany S says McCann is the most improved, and I could definitely see that because he was brought into this team before Tata, right? He's the first side. Yeah, it's a good. Yeah, goal. a lot we, of people he, are saying McCann. He caught a lot of flack. Right, because he came in, he was like our first marquee signing, right? I mean, well, I guess Bialba would be, but McCain was the first signee, like, or was Carlton the first signee of the team? Uh, I thought Bialba was the first. Signee. He was the first DP. Okay. Yeah, so McCain came in before before Tata was ever even part of the team, and he caught a lot of flack because I don't think Tata realized how to play him to start mm-hmm. off. No, with. he didn't. It's a good point. That's yeah, but then he point. proved a, it, he probably garnered himself and adapted to the system. Yeah, right. exactly. And Tata and Change no, no fucking body. <laughs> <laughs> He's uh yeah, McCann is definitely a very utilitarian player. Was that the dog? I think that was yeah. Kevin. <laughs> no. Do you guys have any? I've got multiple. I can keep churning them out unless you guys have other award suggestions. Um, no, we, yeah. What do you mean? So we can go snake draft because Dylan asked. Well, snake. we got we got a, we got some more. Sorry, in here. Um, no, I guess everybody's saying McCann. Yeah. And then, yeah. <laughs> um, so there was a lot of talk about Barkhurst and over the captain armband over the course of the season. Mm-hmm. So now that the season's played out, who would you give the captain armband award to? Who who would you put as cap? Who would you solidify as captain of this team? Well, so. Part of that is I, we don't see what happens off the field. You're absolutely right. And I, but I just from our what happens in the game, who who do you think epitomizes that? So who is like the almost I don't want to use this word, but I can't find it. Lynchpin. Yeah. Who the the mascot of the team yeah like, yeah who 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 is who is yeah i'm gonna say assad he for me because okay. he's and i love him because he pisses people off okay. he pisses opponents off okay which is great and he's got so much he just seems like every time he's got his heart in his sleeve and he's running himself ragged every single game and it to me he seems to be putting in 100 percent every game and i don't see I don't remember a game where it's, I know he had bad games, but it's not like he took them off. Yes. He just was either getting beaten, couldn't put things together, but he was still dogging. Yeah, for sure. So, uh, correction in the in the live chat, Fong, Fong Yang uh, says uh, Jones was the first sign. Oh, okay. Yeah, which I'm pretty, yeah, you're, I think, I you're think right. we all forgot about that. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> so I'm with, I'm, I'm partially I'm with, with Jimmy here, um, that Lorenowitz is the captain. But that said, to me, the guy in the same mold, and I talked about him already, he's really just an unsung hero, engine in the middle, completely our, our, our tone setter, like Carlos Carmona. Yeah. Uh, it, it's a guy that I don't know if we'll be able to bring. I'm sure we can bring him back next season, whether or not he wants to go play somewhere else, I don't know. But uh, I think his contract is, I wish is a would, one year. I wish he was five years younger. Yeah, right? He's, he's, 30, he's, I think he's 32. Yeah, uh, 30 years. Yeah, anyway, he's, to me, I think he is the linchpin. I think with, without him, we saw him. I think, to me, he was the biggest impactful absence throughout the season. He's 30. Okay, that's good. Mm-hmm. Totally under the radar. I am going to say Brad Bizzell. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. I mean, you, you, talk about, energy. you talk about a player that is legitimately commanding 
other players on the field and that was asked to come in and fill in a role that was already established and then to not only make their presence and their impact known, but to become this mortar that binds that defensive become line. Leader. Exactly. And, yeah. and that's what that team really needed. And then not just to become the voice of that or the driving force of it, but to also back that up with solid play, which is what I think the other half of that really means. And so yeah. to see him show that game in and game out and show that resolve and yeah, I mean, especially as much shit as I gave him before he even came in, right? You can see yeah, like, Goose Man, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So right. I, I definitely think he gets my vote for, for the captain's play. I like it. So I, I want to – we'll start this with Kevin this time. Okay. So in, in talking about the DP slot, second most valuable DP, I think we can – I would imagine we can all agree that Almiron is our most valuable DP. Right. Yeah, I was gonna. Yeah. Well, that was what I was gonna say. But the next idea I had was like brightest future award. <laughs> no, <laughs> the second second most valuable DP. So with the rumors that we're gonna sign Franco Escobar, uh, kind of in the same mold of, uh, in the same mold of Anton Walks, right back slash center back. From I want to say he plays for Newell Old Boys, um, Tata's old club. So. What do we? I mean, he's going to be an expensive signing. I mean, do we have to get rid of one of the DPs? I mean, this may be a, you know, a discussion in that in that regard. But who is the second most valuable DP? Along with Almiron, who is the one you would not want to see go most? I guess it would be. The Alba. Yeah. This is obviously one we can't pick different people for. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Okay, just I'll just watching at- Vialba the last five or six games of the season. Somebody else talked about Vialba and most improved. It's just to Dan's point, you know, seeing him. I agree. I, I don't necessarily like he didn't really stand out to me in that beginning half mm-hmm. of the season. Even though yeah, he got some goals and he had some assists and some production, I just wasn't noticing him like I did in that last game against Columbus in that last home stretch where. He was moving up and down, left and right across that field nonstop for a full 90 minutes like nobody else on the field was. Same against and, Minnesota. And yeah, and I just – I can't I, – I think that's why that would be my goal. And he's got that defensive capability. Absolutely. Well. So I'm going to come at and it. He's just explosive. Like He's just genuinely yeah. an explosive yeah, and he, player. He vibrates while he runs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think I would choose Vialba. Would it – to stay, but I'm going to come out for a different way. I don't care which one of them stays because if they go, they're going to be going for a good chunk of change because Alana is not going to let them go for cheap. And it frees up a deep who spot. And Arthur Blank is a gajillionaire. And <laughs> we'll just go out and buy the next best thing. So, so yeah, I'm not too worried about it. Yeah, no, I'm not. I'm not either. It, I mean, the front office is is great. I mean, we have the uh, the scouting department. I'm not really. Yeah, I'm not worried about that either. Um, what else? What else? What else? What else? Um. So. Uh, so we did. So we did. Up. And it's it's hard because you want to keep everything positive and 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 forward moving. But I think that you I, also I have to be one. realistic. Oh, you've got, if you've got one, go ahead. Most fun player. I really loved yelling Kratzkrieg every time Kevin Kratz <laughs> came on the field. In the same way, the WrestleMania cheers, too. Go, oh, sir. I mean, just, he was so polarizing for the yeah. entire season. For me personally, and I think for a lot of other people, too, but there was something so special about watching him whenever those moments clicked, and it was genuinely exciting to see him whenever he was in a rhythm. He was creating space oh, yeah. and getting opportunities consistently in some of those games where it was like it's just it's a matter of time before it happens, you know. And, and then his celebration along with that and everything else that he brought. I mean, without him, Atlanta, there's no way Atlanta United has a success in this season. No, and we saw that his absence was yeah. very, yeah, very absolutely. noticeable. Um, yeah, yeah, Joseph for sure. I don't know, um, like most. Define it again. 
most fun player. Which which player did you enjoy watching the most? Almiron. Yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah. I, there, mm. there's something to be said about a guy who is, I, I've said this before, but faster <laughs> on the ball than off of it. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's insane. Plus the Mario. <laughs> plus the Luigi run. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, and, he and Tito both. They both yeah. have that, that same yeah. video game run where they just fling, <laughs> fling their head back and, and wail their arms, uh, or flail, flail their arms. Um, Every yeah. time he gets on the ball, he fucks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's got such yeah, tight control. control. It, it's, well, it, and I think that I mean it's the same thing with Joseph. Whenever Joseph came in after an injury and stuff, and you, you felt the crowd sort of ignite, and you could see it happen on the field. Yeah, it was the exact same thing whenever Amaron came back on after an injury at the end of the season. Like he came on, and that oh. pace of the game, it was just electric. I mean, yeah. the stadium I felt just... it. Everybody was just like, again, to your point, something really, really fun and exciting that completely changed the game so yeah so man i really hope this team just doesn't slide doesn't slide into oblivion next year and this is just a total one-off <laughs> what's so who was your um so after those guys i'm trying i have to say bialba yeah. i love watching him yeah play. he's well, fun, especially man. whenever he scored oh yeah that was always the best i mean just fantastic Fantastic player. I love his. One thing I loved about Joseph as well was those defensive um, traits that he would show to come back and fight for it and get it back on the field. It's, yeah. it's just. It's the box. Yeah, no. Uh, yeah, their strike anywhere matches, but they're, yeah, they're broken, I guess. This uh, box is just whittled down to nothing. Ah, uh, yeah, I use the bathroom a lot, dude. <laughs> It's a question. <laughs> yeah. um, so Josh Busby forty seven says most fun equals Garza attacking fullbacks are my thing. I yeah he was uh, he was yeah. definitely on my list. He was really fun to watch uh, work up the wings with the side. Same with Walks. I thought Walks was fun yeah. to watch too. Yeah. Um, and he, how about uh, LGP? How interesting he always made things. Anytime he gave the ball away, yeah. <laughs> like tracking back and having making that a one tackle. That only happened fifty percent. Yeah. yeah, he makes such a spectacular. Glass is half full. He, yeah. I'll give him. He's my, really like it's almost like insider trading what LGP does. It's yeah, like he he needs to get some defensive stats, so he's uh, like, I'm gonna I'm gonna wait for somebody to take the ball away from me so I can go make a defensive play. But, no. <laughs> but then he actually saved our asses on numerous. Oh, for sure. <laughs> no, I think about it. And I think he's he wins my Steve Stifler award. From American Pie, he, he he comes in and he saves the day, but he's also the reason you were in the pickle. <laughs> <Right. laughs> yes, yes, I love it. Yeah, uh, so uh, that's the Tyrone Mears Award. <laughs> <laughs> Only he doesn't save the day. Uh, at all. It just yeah. Up. So Tyrone Mears for me gets the chocolate teapot reward because it's useless. Okay, a chocolate teapot. Oh right, because you heat it up and it melts. Yeah. yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. I never heard that before. I like it. It's a, it's a hard one to decipher. Uh, Fong Yang says his is Carmona acting as an enforcer throughout the whole season. I uh, that's yeah. It yeah. was fun to watch him slide tackle the world. Yeah. So, um, so did you did you see the news that um, Joseph Martinez broke today? What it, on Instagram? There was a yeah, video yeah. of him. Shout out to Rob. Yeah. yeah. Shout out to Robin Sagini of uh, Terminus Legion for pointing this out. They, so they were standing next to, it was Martinez's locker number seven, Kevin Kratz's locker number eight, blank locker number 10, Almoron's locker. It was Joseph standing next to it with Almoron. And they were like, guess he's already gone. Yeah. What? Number nine. Well, people were talking about as soon as the uh, as soon as the season was over that he was retiring. I, I couldn't find anything anywhere, but people were saying know. that he retired. He's got, a, I, he's got stuff to give teams. He'd be great on like Vancouver, mm. Montreal. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, put him put him on one of those teams. Fine. Yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, the point is, this. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> hey, one man's garbage is another man's treasure, right? Not always, though. <laughs> so, so, sometimes garbage is just garbage. A, an old chicken tray is still like, still has raw man. chicken juice in it. You said to comb your hair. Good chicken rib? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do some chicken bowling. All right. Um, on that note, I think that's about it for this. Favorite goal? Oh, my God. We can go all day. 
we can go all that. We'll it's get fun. A, we're we'll, reminiscing. Favorite goal? No, that one's too big. That's too big of a. I think you want to think about that one? Yeah, I want to say let's get a cluster of them. Let's get a cluster of three whenever we do our call-in show. Uh, be sure to DM us or hit up Tim on Skype, and we'll we'll try to kind of make sure we spread the word on that. Oh, speaking of spreading the word. We do still have some stickers. We have batch number two did not go out. It's kind of jumbled up in all this moving, the studio, everything else. We've got them ready to go. I just need to physically take them and mail them. That's on me. So yell at me, not these guys. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll get together and try to figure out what we're going to do in the offseason. We're going to have some pro-rail talk. We'll obviously be bringing oh, in yeah. updates on the playoffs and get everybody to call in for a fan appreciation show. Maybe do some Twitch streaming on FIFA. Some interviews, probably. Yeah, we yeah. got a lot of stuff in the works. So thanks for keeping up with us. Uh, keep those iTunes reviews and comments coming in. We'll be sure to read those on the show, and it keeps sort of keeps the momentum going in these couple of cold months until we get back up and running again on a regular schedule in March. So uh, yeah, find all three of us on Twitter. Yeah, where can they find you at? Find me at Dan Jamis. And Tim, you can find me at Tim Herb. Find me as well at the architect. That's at E underscore A R C. The number one T E C T. Find us collectively at home before dark. That's the four spelled B in the number four. We love the hell out of you guys. It was one fun season. It's not really ever going to be done for us. So uh, we'll see you next week or the week after, whenever it is. And as always, be home before dark.